Hey guys, it's Janice from Ozark Family Homestead. We just recently had our Cornish Cross meat birds butchered. And today we're going to finish processing them here at home. I'm going to show you what we do once we get them back and why we do it and all the supplies we use and just the whole process in general. So we're going to get started on that and I'm going to take you along with us today. Here we go. Okay, here is what we're going to be working on today. We have three coolers worth of chickens here to get shrink wrapped. So we'll start working on those. There should be, what is it, 45 birds here that we ended up having butchered. Uh, there was a local lady. We have a pretty large Mennonite community here in our area. And she butchers the birds and you get them back in these Ziploc baggies and she charges two dollars a bird for that service so we are not processing ours ourselves we are taking advantage of the good deal she gives us so all right let's get started on this okay so here is how we receive the birds once we get them back from the lady that butchers them for us and they are just fine in the ziploc baggies and in years past i've just gotten them home and thrown them straight in the freezer this way you can do that and they'll last for quite a while and be just fine in the Ziploc baggie. But for us, we're hoping that some of these birds will last us for a full year. So I really want to give them a bit of extra protection from freezer burn and things like that. So we have chosen to take them out of the Ziploc baggies and instead basically shrink wrap them in this type of baggie right here. It's just a oblong um, larger bag. Here is where I've purchased them from. Texas Poultry Shrink Bags. The website is right here on the back at the bottom. That is where I've purchased them from. I hope that glare goes away. You can see that. Okay, TexasPoultryShrinkBags.com. Very nice people to work with. The first time I ordered these, I waited too long. I procrastinated and I even left a little note on there that I'm sorry I waited too long, but I need these super quick. Could you please expedite shipping to get them here as quickly as possible? And they did. Very nice, very helpful people. So, highly recommend these shrink bags. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to remove it out of this, put the chicken in this. The chicken will then go inside the bag into the hot water, and the baggie will start to shrink up and conform around the chicken. We will use this big straw contraption here as well and we're going to show you this whole process so you can see us do it you know, in real time to see how it works and I'm also going to show you how we place them in our deep freeze because there's a strategy to that as well. So here we go we'll get started on the actual processing of them. Okay Sean is going to show me how he goes about doing this. He's going to be our model here. So, okay, what do we do first? Okay, we have to use a stock pot because it's large enough for the chicken to go into. And we heat the water up. Um, what we have, we have found over the years of doing this is once the water is at least about 175 degrees and higher, it's hot enough to, to make that bag shrink up quickly. Okay, so the, the water is going to have to be hot enough that it shrinks that bag. Again, I found. 170, 175 is it's that temperature and above uh, is where it starts to work. So we've got our water heated up and we just use our digital thermometer to confirm that our water is hot enough. So go over here and we've got the, the chicken that's in the, uh, in the bag. I take it out and I put it in the sink because I don't want any excessive water inside the chicken. I don't know, no need to just be freezing up water inside the chicken. So make sure it's drained off. Take a bag and I take the chicken and I put it, uh, I almost said head down, there's no head, so let's say neck down would be more appropriate. And so you've got the back side of the chicken at the entrance, at the uh, opening of the bag. This tube is to let air out. So put the tube, don't shove the tube all the way in. If you shove the tube all the way in, it goes against the chicken and air is not going to come out. So we want that tube about halfway into that bird. 
we're just going to take a grip here and we're going to spin this around a little bit. Then we're going to take a zip tie and the zip ties come with it. And you zip tie snug with that tube still in the bag. Okay? okay. At this point we're ready to put in the water. So I just put it down in that water and it just takes a few seconds. And I kind of tilt it around, move it around a little bit. I kind of wiggle my uh, this tube around a little bit and it's pretty obvious in a few seconds that it has shrank, conformed to the chicken. Ta-da! Bring it over here, pull my tube out, and as soon as I pull my tube out, I finish tightening up my zip tie, and the chicken is now ready to be sent on to Sarah, where she will weigh it. So Sarah's drying it off. Getting all that water off there. Do you know why we do that? Uh, uh, so it doesn't stick to the other chickens? Yes. Yes, we don't want ice forming, so we have a big, massive chicken ice cube out there. Okay, then you are weighing it. How much is that one? Four pounds, four ounces. Four pounds, four ounces. And you are logging it. We're keeping track of all the chickens that we're doing. We're weighing them because we like to figure up our totals there at the end and see how did we do with this year's crop of chickens. So at this point, we're going to continue with uh, the chickens that have to be done. And I will check back in with you guys once we've made some more progress. Okay, this is the last of them. We've already got some in the freezer out there. But isn't it pretty? Look at the big pile of meat for my family. It makes me happy, you guys. So what we're going to do at this point now, we're going to start taking these out to the deep freeze. I'm going to take you all with us. And I'm going to show you how we stack these in the deep freeze so we can get to them when we need them. If you stack them wrong, we have learned this, if you stack them wrong, they will freeze together in one big massive ice cube of chicken. And you will have to chisel them apart whenever you want to get something out for supper. So I do not want you guys to repeat the mistakes that I have. So I'm going to show you how to do it differently. Okay, we're going to head out to the deep freeze now. All right, I have my, uh, well, I was going to say hired help, but you're not hired. I have my helpers here helping with the chickens. So they've brought them out here to the deep freeze. Here we go. Now, we already had some in here, and that's what I want to show you. Okay, I want you to notice how these are put in with the, I'm going to call it a handle. You know what I'm talking about. This, The little end of the baggie here that works as a handle. It is pointing up. When we first put our chickens in the deep freeze, we would put them in and just lay them down flat. Here, like this here. That just made the most sense to me. However, when it comes time to pull them out, these are going to be little bricks. They're going to be frozen solid. And if this is hidden with another chicken right by it, you're not going to be able to get to the handle. So we're going to be proactive here and do it differently. We are going to put our chickens in with this handle pointing upwards. Okay, so it can be grabbed and pulled out. Here's the other thing. We are going to put chickens in here one layer at a time. These have been in here already freezing somewhat. We're not going to just pile four and five layers of chickens up in this deep freeze. They will all solidify into one big ice cube. So we have this one layer. These are not totally frozen, but pretty much. Before I put this second layer in here that my not hired, hired helpers here have, we're going to go through and we're going to make sure these are each loose. They are not one big mass. I'm just going to give them a little tug and they do move. Okay. These are not going to be one big solid mass when I come to get them months from now. So at this point, we can start putting our second layer in. Here, David, 
Why don't you hand me one of yours? There we go. We're going to start putting these second layers in. Anna's got one. Oh, give me just one. She's handing me two at a time. There we go. One. Okay. You guys get the gist of it here? Do not make the same mistakes I did. It was so stressful trying to get those birds out when they were all just frozen together. So, and after we get this second layer in here, we're going to let these just sit for a while. We're not going to bother them. And then we will come back with a third layer later on. It is not the most efficient use of the space, but it leaves you with much less of a headache later on. So, sacrifice the space to save yourself the headache later. Okay guys, so that's the process that we use to go ahead and finish the processing of our meat birds. Now we're going to go ahead and do some calculations. Um, we just like to do those for ourselves every year to see what our cost breakdown was of everything. You remember that Sarah was keeping track of the weight of each and every one of those birds. We're going to go back now and do the math and figure out what the average uh, weight was of the birds that we did and I'm looking at ones from years past we will figure out the average weight per bird um, and then figure out what our expenses were and that's going to be uh, the cost of feed that we had to purchase of course the cost of the chicks of the meat bird chicks when we purchased them um, the cost of us having the lady butcher them for us the two dollars per bird that gets figured is in as an expense as well and then we can figure in that entire cost of all those expenses divide them up by the number of birds that we were able to finally uh, grow to maturity and process and that will give us what our cost was per bird now we can do the same thing with the pounds our total expenses that we uh, spent to grow out these birds divided by the average weight that we came up with and that will tell us how much per pound we have paid for each of our for our chickens for our family so we will do that every year um, I will have another video showing how we raise our meat birds that should be out here shortly as well. It's a much longer video because it took weeks and weeks and weeks to film. So keep an eye out for that. And I guess if you like this video, guys, please give me a thumbs up. Sure would appreciate it. And be sure you are subscribed if you are not already. And if you could spread the word, tell your family and friends to watch Ozark Family Homestead. Our whole family would really, really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.